That's why you call it. That's why you call it. Hey everyone, Malhar here from Before and After Tennis. Today I want to talk to you about a few changes that one of my players made that helped him increase his serve speed. And then we'll put in some footage of Ben Shelton as well because we can really see what we're trying to achieve when we incorporate that footage. And I'll show you a drill that we use to help my player really learn to use his body more efficiently to get more out of his body so that he could hit his serve harder. And finally, we'll touch a little bit on motor programming, how to practice, and why most players and some coaches, myself included in the past, really get this wrong. So let's go ahead and we'll dive right in. So on the left here, we have the four. Let's watch it in real time. And let's take a look at the after here. Okay, so let's get started. A lot of club and recreational players have this problem where they're essentially popping down into an up and down squat and then jumping up into making contact with the ball. There are so many different ways to think about the serve and there's a lot of researchers who've coined terms on separate parts of what happens in the serve. For example, we have Dr. Bruce Elliott who talks about the external rotation into internal rotation. But today we're going to use Dr. Mark Kovacs research on the role of the back hip and what it does in terms of contributing to the power on the serve. Essentially why you don't want to create what Axel's doing here is there's basically a limited amount of quote unquote shoulder over shoulder rotation. And we can just see that by aligning what his shoulders do. And then we can also take a look at what shape he creates with the front of his body. You often hear the cue that you need to have your left hip sticking out over the baseline. But Kovacs argues that the explanation for this is often butchered and explained incorrectly. So what do I mean by that? If we look at where Axel is here in this after, Axel is the name of my player, we'll notice that there's a pretty similar setup with what his shoulders are doing. It is a little more extreme, sharply upwards, but really look at what the body is doing. If we look at Axel's body, you can see that he's getting his hip out into the court. Now, this is where the cues explained wrongly, where players are told to put their hip into the court, but what that ends up creating is an excessive load on the front foot. Which brings us to Kovacs' research and his finding that the number one correlation between serve speed on the ATP and WTA tours is how much energy a player can store in their back right hip if they're right-handed, and then how quickly they can get that energy out of that hip and translate it. Obviously, you're from the ground out of that hip into the rest of the stroke. So what you want to do at this moment is you want to have at least 60% of your weight on the back right foot, which really allows you to get into this position. And the cue is you need to twist down and back on your hip. So if you watch, there's a very subtle thing going on with Axel's knees, which is that they are turning to the side. So they're actually turning this way away. So if the knees can turn back, then you can turn the hips, the torso, the shoulders, and so on. So he's also getting probably a little bit more separation than on the left side. So if you watch his knees, they're turning away from the target so that all of that energy can store into the body and then out versus if we look really here, let's clear all of this stuff. If we look here at his knees, he's just going down and up. So you don't want to bend your knees when you toss the ball you want to, I think Jeff Lewis Tennis, uh, if you follow his YouTube, has a great term where he talks about torquing the knees. So the knees go back 
versus how they're just going down and then up. The more efficient way if you really want to get more out of your body is to learn to twist the knees which will allow you to sit that right hip back and down so that you can basically push against the ground and uncoil all of that energy, really that energy that's stored in the back right hip into the contact. So we brought in footage of Ben Shelton and I want to show you how Axel is essentially emulating a few of the concepts that Ben is executing on his serve. So obviously Shelton has been flipped so that he has become right-handed. Now let's watch what he does with his body. So if we look at his back right hip, obviously the angles aren't exactly comparable, but we can see that back right hip is quite loaded and that left hip is jutting out over the court. Again, to reiterate that, it's not that you should try and stick the left hip out over the court by itself. It's about loading at least 60% of the weight at your most loaded over that back right hip. So the back right hip goes down and back. And really, if we look at Shelton's shoulders, he has quite an extreme shoulder over shoulder position, even more extreme than Axel here. Really a fantastic use of the body. And this is something I really encourage players to think about all the time. It's because he executes technical elements really well. That's what makes it a high level serve. And obviously a very big chunk of that is his body's output. How much energy can he output through the ground into the contact? So definitely not saying it's just pure technique. You need a world-class body that's able to translate that energy from the ground into the contact as well. But the technique definitely does help. If we look here, look at his shoulder over shoulder and how that energy is coming from the ground up, into the contact. Hey, sorry for the interruption. If you want help with your serve, you can check out my video analysis service. The link is in my description. And if you want to trial a virtual private lesson where you can come with your own footage, you can submit it to me. I'll give you my opinion on it. We can chat about how you practice, if the ways you're practicing are really helping you improve. You can find that information on my website as well. Okay, now back to the video. If we watch here on the left, we've set up a cone behind Axel's back foot. We've placed a ball on it. And really the cue is to sink down and turn the knees away, coiling the segments of the body and get most of that energy loaded in the back right hand. Here, at least 60% of your weight should be on the back foot. And then if we look at the position Axel's getting into, it's quite extreme, but we can see the shoulder over shoulder position that he's creating. And then from there, you can throw the ball. And really importantly here, the throw of the ball should go upwards, not just forward. Another thing to keep in mind here is you want to feel as if that right butt cheek is being brought out into the court. And if you really want another way of thinking about it, you can imagine that someone has placed a chair into the court and that you're just trying to sit your butt, your right cheek essentially into that chair. That's really the best way of getting into this body position and then swinging upwards and outwards. So you need to practice getting into that position. You can do things like static holds in that position so that you feel familiar with what your body should be doing. Then you progress it to slow shadow throws where you're really loading the body and imagining the throw of the ball going upwards and outwards. Then you can actually progress to a drill where Axel is 
Here, where he's on court, he's making that throw upwards, and then finally, you can try to recreate it with the racket, ensuring that you really load at least 60% of the weight on the back right foot, and you get that feeling of, again from Jeff Lewis Tennis, torquing the knees and using all that energy stored in the back right hip, pushing against the ground, and then finally into the contact. And now I want to talk to you about how to practice. So we were able to achieve that change in Axel's serve in about an hour. We worked through some progressions to get him there to where he was using his body way more efficiently and getting more energy from the ground into the contact. That doesn't mean his serve is permanently changed because you need to understand that the changes you make in a practice session are transient, they're impermanent. This is where I see so many players and even some coaches really mess this up. You cannot just do one session on a particular stroke or skill that you're working on and then just go away and play matches for the rest of the week and expect the changes to stick. You need to really consolidate the work that you did. It's about motor programming and motor patterns. How many repetitions does Axel have where he is now loading his body, where he's loading the right hip back and down and unwinding all of that energy into the contact? He's got barely any. So when it's three all in the third set and he's playing his friend Bob and it's deuce and he has to hit a big serve down the tee, do you think he's going to be thinking about, oh, I did a session with Malhar where I was working on getting my right hip back and down and using the energy from the ground and it relates to this guy named Mark Kovacs. No, of course not. He's just thinking, hey, how am I going to hit the serve well? And that's where you need to do the work to make it automatic so that in those pressure situations, you can hit a serve with your new mechanics or you can hit a forehand with your new mechanics. That means you need to do the work outside of the session with your pro to consolidate the changes. That can even mean stuff off court where you're doing slow shadow repetitions, standing in front of a mirror, setting up that cone behind you where you're really feeling what your body should be doing, what your hip should be doing, loading back and down. But yet nobody does that. The norm is you go and take a lesson, then you go and play a few matches in the week and you think that you're going to improve. That's really not how improvement works. You need to understand that improvement in lessons is often transient and that you need to consolidate the work that you did in sessions to really make the changes permanent, to make them stick, to build the myelin around those neural circuits so that A, you become more comfortable executing them, B, it becomes automatic without thinking, and C, you can basically recreate that new movement pattern way faster. So there you go, everyone. Hope you enjoyed it. All my information is in the links below. Hope that all made sense. Thanks for watching and hope to see you all soon.